So it was so, I was like, I feel bad for Brandon. I just threw him in <laughs> with like two of the yeah. most charismatic, beloved actors of all time. <laughs> he comes in, he holds his own, and I remember at, right at the end of that scene, everybody, you guys were like, yeah! I'm Jordan Peele. Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. I'm here with the cast of Nope, Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, Steven Yun, and Brandon Perea. This is my team, my dream team, and I just made a film with them. So let's talk. What if I told you that today you'll leave here different? Fox. Fox! I'm talking to you. Bro, what you see? Something above the clouds. That's big. How big? Big. You know, all I know is that I, I need to start with a big risk. I need to um, start with something that I'm sort of not supposed to do and, and something that I can't do, something I don't know if I can do yet. And um, then the, the project that comes from that um, uh, is somewhat aspirational. Um, I think it just becomes important w with my work for some reason to hold on to as much of that as possible because it really, you know, it started with this notion you know, my, all my, my, you know, with Get Out, it started with this mo notion of I, I have to entertain even if I have no money to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it has to be about the journey that I'm taking the audience on. Um, that, that's kind of become, I think, what people expect from my movies. And so it's been very important to preserve that sense of mystery and that sense that um, you don't know what you're going to get, but that's the point. So when I got the script for Nope, it literally got sent to me on Christmas Day. It just said, Merry Christmas, and here's a script. And that's the first time I knew anything about the movie I was oh, doing. I see. Yeah. Dope. I didn't, like, when I booked the role, there was no synopsis. I had no clue what Nope was about. I was just like, it's a Jordan movie. I'm going to do a Jordan movie. How the hell that's am right. I going to say no to be one of the leads? And yeah, a month and a half later, I didn't know what I was doing. He just sent me a movie list. It was uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jaws, and No Country for Old Men. 2001 A Space Odyssey and Alien. Mm -hmm. And I watched all these movies and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's about to do. A month and a half later, script arrives and then I read it and I was like, damn, like no one's gonna expect this from Jordan being next. And then, yeah, it was crazy just to be a part of it and being here, it's insane. Every, I mean, everybody here ha, ha, and, and I have a different uh, journey to get to this movie mm. and Brandon, a very unique one, because I think you're probably the only person here who didn't know anything about it. No, Corhan. And you came in from a pure audition, and I didn't know anything about you. And I remember I put out, you know, we put out a, a, a one line about the character, mm. what I thought the character was. And uh, you came in with a very clear view of who Angel was. And it was not who I was asking for. Wow. But it, changed the role and it changed the way I looked at the role. I just so. found out like yesterday that it was kind of like a super nerdy, quirky type of dude that was like happy, go lucky, like here, I'm here to help fix things. <laughs> and, uh, and then I came in like, cause you just have films with performances that are so grounded, you know, where yeah. it makes like, it's real humans. It's not like we're watching a movie. It's like, oh shit, this is going on over there somewhere in the world. And I think you did the same thing with Nope. So I was attacking the audition like, all right, this seems too like, who the hell's happy to be working at a retail store? Yes. Like I was like, when I go in there, people are kind of depressed. Like they're mm -hmm. kind of just like, hey, what do you need? Yes. All right, you need something else? Okay, cool, I'll just <laughs> yeah. grab you. No, it's not on sale. I'm not gonna give you a sale. So yes. it's like, I was like, all right, let me just attack it where what I know, what I've seen in the world. And so, it made, it made yeah. me laugh so much. I mean, I remember <laughs> laughing so hard so at, at his audition and, and yeah, and it was like, you know, this is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, the, um, the, the, you know, every one of these, these people sort of holds half the key to the character uh, that, that we've, we've discussed together. And the whole, the whole hope for me as a collaborator is at some point that, that my, 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 one of my, my actor is going to understand the character better than I, I can. Mm. So, what, so that what I can do is I can focus on the story and really you, you know, ask and understand how they're feeling in the moment because all these people are really capable of putting themselves inside the role. And so anyway, that's, that, so anyway, thankful. I'm so grateful for you. Right here, 
you are going to witness an absolute spectacle. So what happens next? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Here we go. We talked a lot about kind of the personas and people that we know publicly, and we also talked about, um, I guess, you know, coming into, I think when you're new into a dynamic, into a structure like Hollywood, um, there's an inherent, like, infantilization. And I wonder if, like, anyone can feel, a lot of people like that can feel, even if they're not children when they become known, they still feel that uh, weight of the gaze upon you. Mm -hmm. And it takes years to kind of chip that away. And I think um, some people don't get to break free of that. And, uh, or maybe we, all of us never do, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we talked a lot about that and I think, um, mm. yeah, it's, it's, it's so fun collaborating with Jordan that way, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we went, we went deep and we went hard and, and a lot of it, I think, it's impossible to work in this industry for very long without having s scars yeah. of moments where you feel like you were um, exploited or feel like you were infantilized or erased and other things. And so the, 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 what's terrifying about these scars is it's, it's, wound, it's, it's all wound up in the, the, our, in, in the, the quest for attention. Mm -hmm. and, and the scar, it's, it's, it's cyclical. It's cyclical. It's something that you can, and so that's why you know fame is very destructive to people who don't have a secure system, secu secure support support system or foundation. Mm -hmm. I get asked a lot, you know, where what what was what is the spark? And I guess it kind of it doesn't really work like that for me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the word that we said the most on set, or I said the most, was spectacle, mm -hmm. and so that was the starting point. Um, for me in a lot of ways of what I knew I wanted to give the audience. Mm. And it was a lot of the analysis that I, I, I did in thinking about what we were discussing and what we were uh, dealing with. A lot of the analysis dealt with spectacle and this industry and business of spectacle and, uh, and that there's a magic to it and something that I've, I've devoted my life to being a part of. And there's also something insidious about it. And when you have that duality, that's a, that's a perfect pro kind of thing for me to tackle, because I love that, I love duality. Mm. I, do, I do like Westerns, all, although, you know, I think this film, you know, more than anything is about the, uh, the Hollywood mythology of the Wild West. And um, the, not only the sugar coating of the, of the um, barbarism of it, but you know the erasure of the the black cowboy, <laughs> uh, and and uh, at, at all is is all wrapped up in this this movie. So, in a lot of ways, this movie is we talk about in terms of the media. A lot of ways, it's about Hollywood. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse, and that man is my great great grandfather. Great. There's another great grandfather. But that's why back at the Haywood Ranch, as the only black-owned horse trainers in Hollywood, we like to say, since the moment pitches could move, we had skin in the game. So much of my um, work, obviously, is about black horror and, and putting black faces in, in my favorite genre mm -hmm. and genres in ways I, I haven't seen. And the, the turmoil with which the world was in when I wrote this Mm. Um, is in this movie, but it also was a transformative for me because it, it became very important to represent black joy and to represent black adventure mm. and black aspiration and black excellence in it as well and, and human nature overcoming its obstacles. The centerpiece of that heart is this brother and sister um, that are reconnecting in a way and, and um, you know, just immediately, I remember we sat down for about like a three hour session in my, in my office. Mm -hmm. The first thing we did, we all got together. Mm -hmm. We talked about our lives. We talked about the characters. We talked about our connections to them. So we, we sort of had like, we had a familial um, base to the whole thing. And then just, you know, like I said, you watch two people that their chemistry just formed perfectly. 
And Emerald is the reason OJ is OJ, and OJ is the reason Emerald is Emerald. And that's what, that's what I love about siblings. Something that I really, that came to me in like, today actually, is just realized that like, oh, we spent the film like, it's like, I, like OJ didn't inherit any of um, his father's charm, and what is it? Emerald didn't inherit any of his father's responsibilities. Yeah. And, and, but then it, together they could have run it. Yeah. Yes. You know? And that's what they do. I think that's yes. what. Oh, yeah, I can't say the ending, but. That's why right. right. they, right. right. they kind of twig yeah. at a certain point of the film. <laughs> I think we both w went in there. I'm, I'm not gonna speak for you, though. But I, I went in there. Well, I got in there. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, we both went in there. It were kind of. Um, I think with the same intention, just like same guy, and like we want to capture. And I, something I said to Jordan, I think throughout this whole process is like, the, the, the I think there's beautiful moments between Emerald and OJ is at the end of a scene. And then mm. they play, or they do something, or like, do you know what I mean? And then we always were like, deep there, the moments that people, whoever's got a sibling, be like, oh, mm. they've known each other since kids. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, you just know they've known each other since kids. They play together. You know, that's something that I really wanted. And especially, the only time you see a bit of play from OJ is when Emerald gets it out of him, you know? And because she's the only p person that can really unlock him, you know, in any sort of emotion. That's how I, I feel about like um, and so I I went there. With, I mean I think we both open, yeah, and wanting those moments to just arrive and like especially with Jordan just to come to us and we just act upon it. So yeah, yeah, and thinking about the spaces in between the scenes or the moments that you haven't ever seen be between them growing up. Jordan always was speaking about it's not so much about the scene that's happening, but the moment that happened before, the feeling and thought that led to that. So we kind of filled that space in our minds and then it, it came out in the moments we worked together. When did y'all meet prior to y'all meeting me? Because I remember like when we got introduced, we got introduced in the scene and in real life like literally at the same time because mm -hmm. our, our first scene was the first time I met y'all. Mm -hmm. So, and I just remember seeing how much chemistry y'all had already and I'm like, what the hell, this is my day one? I was like, I'm about to have to build with them like naturally through the course of the film. Mm -hmm. So I was like truly intrigued. I'm like, when did Daniel and Kiki meet? Because it seems like y'all known each other for Years when we just started that scene, I was it's like, true. I didn't, I didn't we, we didn't let you guys even say hello before yeah. we started the scene. Yeah, yeah. really, it was right? kind of like you just spearheaded of like Daniel, Brandon, Kiki, Brandon. And I was just, and then we mm -hmm. just started going. You started yeah. going, and uh, the the scene is so awkward. So it was so. I was like, I feel bad for Brandon. I just threw him in. <laughs> with like two of yeah. the most charismatic, <laughs> beloved actors of all time. Yeah. He comes in, he holds his own, and I remember at, right at the end of that scene, everybody, you guys were like, yeah! Yeah, because I was like trying to hold back. Up. I was like, do not meet them yet, because you're meeting them right now in the scene as strangers, just keep it as strangers. And then once it was done, I was like, yo, my bad, y'all. Like, I'm here, I'm here, I promise I'm a good guy. I'm no, cool, I'm, I'm like, cute. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's Angel, that wasn't me. <laughs> Bro, what'd you see? Something about the clouds. That's big. How big? Big. You think whatever killed Pops is out there? I mean, he is iconic. Um, and and he is, you know, he was uh, in some of the great genre films uh, of all time. I think the thing, John Carpenter's was the thing, was his first. And he went on to do They Live. He's, he's, it, it, the, the character has so much gravity that, uh, in, that presides over the entire film. Um, that I needed somebody that, spoiler, spoiler alert, in a short amount of time, um, could cast that gravity. Mm. And he is that presence. He is that guy where you feel like, you know, I know him and he is in charge. Mm. So yeah, he's a magnificent and such a nice guy. Jordan, do you remember that day when he just started singing? <laughs> Were you there? Yeah, uh, yeah w w wait, oh, you mean in scene? In the scene, and no, yeah. no, he just started like, he started breaking into song. I think we was waiting for a take and he just started breaking into song. I think mean, it was like Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he's just came on the vibes. The whole song though, like, the whole song. Yeah. And it was just like, wow. And then he's he just so stopped. funny. And, and, uh, and he's the voice of uh, Goliath and Gargoyles. I don't know. Mm. Come on, Gargoyle. Oh, you gotta yeah, bring yeah, it back. Yeah, you gotta bring it back. That's okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, true. Uh, it's it's funny with Keith David because I remember I went to like a brunch somewhere in LA and I saw him there prior to this movie and I was just like, damn, Keith David's here. I was like, yo, man, I'm somewhere. And then uh, like when I saw that he was in the film, I was like, 
man, this is crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> One time I met Keith David long ago at an awards ceremony. After, after an awards ceremony, I went up to and I went to a big fan, a big fan man. Do you have any advice for a young aspiring actor? And he said, yeah, whatever they ask you to do, you tell them one thing. Show me the money. You, sir. Oh, good. Yeah, aye, aye, sir. Uh, you know, uh, I quit actually, acting shortly after. He's no right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of videos for flying shit online. Ain't nobody gonna get what we gonna get. What we gonna get? The money shot. What's up? Undeniable proof of aliens on camera. The Oprah shot. You guys gonna tell me what's going on? Hell no. no. With Angel, there is this want to be a part of a family, but it's not so open. He's dealing with his own demons and he's looking for some sort of purpose. And there's just this feeling of like, everyone's dumb around me, right? And then these two characters pop up, OJ and M, and then y'all are at my home trying to question me. And I'm like, are y'all crazy? Like, this is my crib. Like, what are y'all doing? And then I kind of find out what y'all are up to subtly. And then it's like, hmm, they can kind of help me in many ways as well. So then there's this respect there. So then that's when the complete dive in of like, all right, I gotta do anything I can to be a part of this now. Now there's a mission, I can help, and also, y'all can help me. Like there's this, looking in OJ's eyes was kind of like, he's not biting at the stuff that I'm giving him right now. Like, and I just remember seeing that behind the register being like, he's not biting. All right, I'm respecting him right now. He's keeping that eye contact locked on me. And I just remember you just were, you were just like popping off like, this mother type deal and I was just like all right they're they're ready to play so that was kind of like the dynamic I was playing with and then once I once y'all earned my respect it was kind of like what can I do to be a part of this now like yeah. I need to learn from you guys you can learn from me I promise you know there's that hunger there there's only one scene with the four of these the, these guys in it there's one scene and I was sad that there wasn't more this is the scene mm. yeah, so over a long distance <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's so funny to me to this and day. yeah I love this scene it takes place over a long distance you don't everyone's um, shouting right everyone's shouting and uh, it, it was it's one of the scenes where you know there's not the the, the 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 suspense and the craziness it, it isn't happening, but mm -hmm. it is kind of the heart and soul of the movie for me in a way because um, you know everything is in there, mm. Um, mm. Uh, everything is in there, and and these these four talents, it's like, you know, the, the like I said, it's like the characters um, g grow when when they're closer. They mm -hmm. even they even you can you can tell who they are and uh, anyway on that scene i think there's this deep sense of isolation you feel yeah amongst every individual person and like you're saying like this deep desire to connect but they just can't yes so many things in the way um, yeah i feel that i need you to tell me what did you see in that cloud well, it's not what you think no! they took me they took them all. I gotta get out of this house. I'm trying to save you. My brother is out there. I don't think they take you. If you don't look at it. But don't look, don't look. This dream you're chasing. Where you end up at the top of the mountain. It's the one you never wake up from. Without going into, I guess, too much detail, I think sometimes it's easier for you to be the projection everybody wants you to be than it is for you to Ooh. resist and fight that every day. Um, if you're not, if you're not like, especially when you're that young going into it. Um, that's real. Shit. That is so real. Yeah. And that's so much of my life as a child actor, right. too. Yeah, like to just, you, <laughs> yeah, don't, you don't, don't see the patterns that you're just like intrinsically going into. <gasps> I resist. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I resist. Uh, but but you also know that the resistance is painful. Oh. So, so then after a while, how many layers and masks and shells are you living behind? And um, that was the. F it was weird because like some days I would come in to shoot Jupe, and I remember we just came in to do the photo shoot after we had finished, mm. and uh, the day before I was like, I'm so depressed right mm. now, like so sad. And it wasn't like put upon me, it was, it was just like, I was just like coming back in and I was like, is it me or is it this person? And I was like, oh yeah, like I'm entering into like 15 layers of like a bodysuit right now yeah. and I have to like control this thing. 
um, when I'm usually just comfortable just like being here and not in that machine. Um, yeah, I, 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 I view Jupe in that way. The nuances that you play in the scene where we're in that room um, and the music underlay that you put in the juxtaposition of what you're performing in the moment and what's actually happened in the past, yeah. it is so spooky and perfect Haunting. in so many ways because it's like, man, this dude is really struggling. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like really all there. Yeah. And, and what's cool about everyone's character is that they're all conscious of it too. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting to kind of connect. I felt like M was like really trying to reach out. Also, and, and in being honest was also like rejecting the front of it too. Yes. You're like, you're lying to me right now. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, but I want, I want you inside. I'm curious, but you won't tell me. And, and she relates because she's performing. Yeah, too. yeah, there's all this. I love yeah, it. When I was watching it, like, after the flashback, I'm not going to spoil it with the flashback scene, and then, yeah. then it goes straight to you, that shot. Yeah, and I think, that, I love that shot. Oh, my, oh, it's hey. amazing. <laughs> and you just see your face, and for me, I was always like, <clears throat> oh, he wants to be saved, but he doesn't know how to ask. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Cool. And then I was like, because I, I was like, because, and that's so always what you were saying about Emerald, like, because you're just like there, and you're just not, and you're tucking something. Yeah. And you know you're tucking something, but you don't know how to untuck it. Yeah, no. It right. happened to you since you was mm. a kid. Yeah. So you're just completely like continuing those patterns, but I saw that in your face. Just when you did that, uh, after that bit, and you're just looking, and your your missus takes you out, and then you you go off on right, one, and then right. your missus is the one that drags you back into your make believe. Like, this really, yeah, 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 yeah. What's a bare miracle? Big out worth that. Yeah, no, no, no. So much of this is about the, the violence of attention mm. and, um, and how, you know, you know gr growing up in my, in my career uh, be, in, in, in front of the camera, and, and understanding the the toll that takes on your spirit, and con changing my career to be on that side of the camera, and and to sort of reconcile that side of it too, the obsession with spectacle, and and being and and so you know this this it, in a lot of ways this is a reflection of all these different sides of this industry of the spectacle that I've been on, and. Um, uh, and you know, me me trying to uh, be up up front with my part in, in it, mm -hmm. uh, at the same mm -hmm. time as live my life and do my tell my story and do my thing. You know, yeah. how do you feel? I'm not going to. I was, what I was going to say was very light, but there is something to be said about the meta ness of that all of mm -hmm. Steven's role and he, you know, who he plays as it pertains to it, and even me being chosen for my character mm -hmm. and how that pertains to the. There is something to be said about that. In the that, process, we spoke a lot about. Exploitation, mm -hmm. and Kiki's been speaking a lot about it like over the last two days, and so I wanted to know like, how do you feel like now watching it, finish, cut, done? How what do you think it says about exploit? What do you what do you what did you what do you think it says about exploitation, and what did you want it to say about exploitation? You know the I, and I don't know what I wanted to say about it, but I did know that that was the theme. I think mm -hmm. I think the vision that I I see now that the film is done. Um, what uh, what I f the, the the way I'm most proud and how we addressed it is is really in this this acknowledgement of the, the the first actor right this 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 the the cowboy the the jockey rather that was in this the Moy Bridge clip mm. that no one knows and the way you know where we are and the you know what what we were able to do in terms of the scope of this film and to uh, address and to name that person. In a lot of ways, um, th this film is the sequel to that, the sequel that was needed, yes. the, the reboot yes. of that original film in which we acknowledge the erasure, we acknowledge the exploitation, we, 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 let, we, we let it lie there, and then we go make the best crazy adventure 
uh, alien movie with black people and black voices and it's and, crazy good and, me, and people of color in general. You know, we just got to get we got to get in some of these movies, guys. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, nope is in theaters uh, July, Friday, the twenty second. Did I do that right in the order? You July, did. Friday. Yeah.